Hi there, it's Jeff. I've put this video together, just a quick one on some of my top joinery tips. Now these are pro tips that I've learnt uh, over the years, just doing things or even by making mistakes. But not only that, these tips will help in your workshop on your projects, saving you time, money, and even just making life easier with some of these tasks. So keep watching and I'm gonna go through these tips with you. Okay. One of the first things I'm going to go through with you is uh, with the track saw, and that is uh, cutting melamine with your track saw. Now, this is something that I do a lot of when I do my projects from working from home. I don't have a huge setup. I've just got a little cabinet saw and this track saw. And so what I do is, for those that don't know, is I, um, I get my full melamine sheets, uh, lay them on my bench. I have a cutting plan. And I do a lot of my big rips with this track saw. And then I will take those pieces and finally cut them on my cabinet saw, just basically making them into manageable pieces. Now, with this track saw, and you get a, and when you get when you are cutting uh, melamine or satin board, you know, materials that you don't want chips in. I do a technique, and it's basically just doing a scribe cut with this first. Now what I do is I lower the blade just so it's only uh, going to cut into my material around about two millimeter, two to three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. And I do that pass first into my material. And then on the second cut, I lower it to the depth of my material plus another mil or two millimeters extra. And I usually have a sacrificial uh, board underneath my material all the time. This is what's on my bench now, just a bit of particle board. With, and you can probably see some lines in it. But I, uh, I do that on the second pass and go right through. So basically I'm doing two cuts. It's a little bit more time consuming, but if you don't want chips in your melamine or those uh, expensive boards, then that's the way to do it. And that's really, really important, is to do that scribe cut first and then do the second cut, cut right through, and you'll guarantee no chips. And that's just basically using a, a, a standard uh, on this saw, it's a 160 millimeter blade. Uh, and that's just using a standard uh, 48 tooth, I think it is, on these. Nothing fancy, nothing, it's, it's not a special melamine blade or anything like that. It's just a standard, uh, you know, fine tooth blade that comes with the saw. And it doesn't matter what brand it is. Um, if you do that first, you'll, you'll guarantee no chips in your, in your fancy boards. So that's tip number one. Uh, another tip, number two, and again using the track saw, is uh, it, this is a dust uh, improvement for your track saw. Now, I don't know what you guys are like, you know, working in your workshop and, and or on site, but I hate the dust, um, and especially working with some of these... Uh, manufactured board materials such as MDF, they are not really good uh, dust to be breathing in. <laughs> it's not like breathing in a little bit of dust from, you know, working with some nice oak or something like that. These, you know, the dust and the particles that are emitted from, you know, some of these manufactured boards, um, they're, they're filled with formaldehydes, you know, a lot of glues that are in them and then it's not, they're not good for you. And we don't really know the, you know, the full outcome of those um, those materials you know in 30 40 years time what they could be doing to it so uh, it's a good idea to wear a dust mask of course but good dust extraction helps so one of the things that does help um, is covering your blade guard and I've and I've uh, outlined this you can see this in, in one of my previous videos um, it's just and all it is is just putting a little bit of masking tape in my particular um, track saw there's a window here for you to, uh, which is open, and it helps you to uh, remove the nut to change your blade, um, but it remains open. So I cover it with masking tape, and I also do another piece down the bottom, like a little skirting from that to the track saw, um, as you can see in the video. And that together with connecting it with a good um, vacuum or dust extractor, that really takes a lot of the dust away when you are doing these cuts. And when you think about it, if you're doing, you know, if you're ripping, like sometimes when I'm doing a job and I'm talking about, you know, these full sheets that I am doing cuts on on my bench, 
sometimes we're talking about six to ten you know panels and the dust adds up uh, when I do a job like that and, I'm, and I've ripped and I've been cutting on you know uh, that amount of boards I fill up a you know a, a decent amount of uh, dust bag so you can save yourself a lot of dust in the workshop and dust flying around by doing that uh, I also have if I can if I can um, I have a couple of fans uh, in the workshop set up and I have them blowing and they're set up in a way that it blows um, the dust out my door in the garage so they if you do have a fan handy as well while you are cutting on these as well as a dust extraction just to get that dust out of your face it's a really really good tip really good idea if you can do that okay uh, this next uh, tip is going to be more a handy device to have in your workshop or in your toolkit and that is these plastic cabinet adjustable legs feet we want to call them uh, basically they, these uh, were invented to screw underneath your kitchen cabinets no and um, they just wind out they have a base here they've got notches in them so you can actually uh, put like if you if you've got to reach under a cabinet or something to, to adjust them you can actually reach in and get your screwdriver in there but they're basically just plastic legs lightweight um, fairly cheap and you wind them in and out and that actually winds the level of your cabinet in and out really great idea so I make sure that I have these in my workshop. Number one, um, not just for the joinery to put underneath them and level them. Uh, you'll see in one of my previous videos, I actually use these when I'm making cabinet uh, bases or, or plinths. That, that's the, basically the framework that your cabinets sit on. Then you put a kick front on, on the front of it. Uh, I actually put these in each corner. And when I'm, when I'm installing that plinth on site, um, it's really uh, leveled quickly with these on each corner and then after I've got my plinth base level then I actually anchor that to the ground using uh, blocks and so on but um, these under cabinets or these under a plinth base um, are really really handy to have because they just level so quickly but not only that I mean I use this sometimes and I, I always have this in my tool bag when I'm on site as well I, um, they're really good sometimes if you want to put your laser level um, and you've got to get that at a certain level providing it's within you know a certain height you can always you can always um, uh, pack this up and put some blocks or something underneath this but this is basically an, an adjustable sort of a, uh, a level up for the for your laser to just to move it up and down and it's uh, it's fairly stable as well um, so yeah these are really really good to have on uh, not just not just in your workshop but on site as well really cheap handy to have all right one of my next pro tips is using these suckers now these are just some they're nothing fancy they're just uh, manual type of suction uh, cups that you can buy in your hardware store uh, there are more fancier ones that you pump and, and, and battery operated as well but these come in handy now, especially when you've got to lift cabinets, uh, sometimes uh, on your own or even uh, with someone else, but they could be awkward. The cupboards could be awkward. Like if you have like big pantry cupboards or something like that, and it's it's hard to get underneath the cabinet, put your hands. Well, these are great because you can just stick these on the side of the cabinet and you've got a handle to help lift. Um, I use these a lot, especially this little one sometimes um, when I've got to get these sheets uh, onto my bench, I, I lift one end up, I put it on a rope and then I sort of flip it over. But just to show you quickly, you know, and you can lift that sort of panel up a lot easier than trying to grip it because um, they can also remember that the sheets can also be slippery. Um, these, you know, something like this behind me here, like a white satin um, melamine, like they, they can be slippery on your hands sometimes. So um, using this to sort of hold it or grab it, they can be really handy. And not only that, it can save you bending over and hurting your back you, with, with one of these handles. Like 
at a, at a reasonable height you can just sort of lift just enough to get off the ground to move it or whatever it might be so keeping these um, in your workshop or in your toolkit if you're going out on site can be uh, really handy for moving cabinets around okay and lastly uh, my last tip and this is just a little one is uh, sandpaper uh, blocks so I make up my own little sanding blocks just using some uh, sheet sandpaper, your normal size ones. And um, just using a lot of, uh, well, this just happens to be a little melamine, but a lot of, of off-cuts around in the workshop, like bits of melamine or MDF, I cut them to little uh, hand sort of sizes, sometimes a little bit bigger. And I use a bit of just a contact spray glue. You spray both, you know how these sort of things work, you spray both surfaces, let it get, get touch dry, and then you stick uh, the block to the sandpaper and then just trip the edges with a, a Stanley knife or a cutting blade or something like that and these are really really handy I use these a lot in the workshop too because they're just great you just I have I have these made up in different uh, grade sandpaper um, gradients and then they're really good for um, just if you want to do a quick chamfer on an edge or take an edge off uh, the sharpness you know um, and they they don't hurt your hands you know they're not going to roll or slip when you just, if you, instead of just, you know, folding that over. And they give you a really nice flat, because they're glued on, you've got a nice flat, even surface when you are sanding things. So especially if you do want to take an edge off or, you know, do a chamfer, they're really good for that. And these are just handy to have in your workshop if you want to quickly uh, take an edge off. I just find these really handy. Um, quick, easy to make, just with some offcuts and the sandpaper. Okay, well that just about wraps up this video on the little uh, tips. Uh, that you can use in your workshop and not only in your workshop but on site in your toolbox as well that just help around and make life a little bit easier. Let me know if you uh, enjoyed this video and if you like some of these uh, tips and if you use some of these tips or if you've got some extra ones or some other ones that, uh, that that help out on site or in your workshop as well. Press like if you liked it and share. Don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up to date with my latest videos coming out every week. And hopefully I will see you in our next video.